Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're gonna be checking out, we're gonna be stepping into the world of SVG. And so the reason being, I came across this cool sort of logo. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll mention the actual article. Somebody recreated a bunch of famous brands um, in the whole new morphism effect or whatever. And so I thought to myself, I'd like to see if I can recreate this as closely as possible. And trust me, I don't get, you know, 100% accurate um, using just solely, you know, HTML, CSS and SVG. Now, what you might not be aware of is when it comes to SVG, you have to do things differently than CSS. So like if you want to create uh, these, these gradients and stuff and the drop shadows, you can't use CSS. You have to do it the SVG way, all right? So this is a little bit more of an intermediate to advanced sort of front-end development topic if you've never used or very rarely messed with SVG. I'm not perfect with SVG, I'm learning myself, but this is the best and closest I was able to get and I think you'll be able to learn something. So as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now as a front-end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so here we are. This is what we want to try to recreate as much as possible. Like I said before, I'm not going to be able to get exactly. There's some interesting things happening here, but I uh, try to get as close as possible. So over here, I have uh, Visual Studio Code opened up with um, a folder that has an index.html linked up with our CSS main.css file here in a CSS folder. I'm using SAS for this, although I probably don't really need to. I'm not even sure if I'm going to use any SAS. It, there's actually not hardly any CSS at all. It's just kind of a habit. Um, <clears throat> And I'm also opening this with Live Server, which is the Live Server extension. You can get into plugins if you don't have it here. Live SAS compiler and Live Server I'm using. Um, so what we want to do, first of all, is get our HTML up and running. Um, so we're going to have a class of container. And the container itself will simply be the rounded area right here. All right. So we'll achieve this with the container class. So let's just do that right now. We have that. Let's go to our SAS file. Here we can see a live preview of what we're working with. And the very first thing we're going to do is uh, specify just the body element here. It has a height of 100 viewport height, margin zero to, to get rid of default margin. Display grid place item center. That's a real handy tool. You place that on the parent item, which in this case is the body. Um, and any if you have a single element, like an HTML element inside of there, it's going to center it all horizontally and vertically. Um, then the background, this color, is the same exact color as shown here. Oops, I clicked on Adobe Illustrator. That's going to load up, unfortunately. Well, we'll close it when it loads up. Anyhow, so I at that point, we, could, we just want to open up our container, and we want to do a border radius of 3M units. And let's close that out. I don't want to rate you. Get out of here. All right, come on. <laughs> Really high quality level control stuff here. Is it going to freeze? Are you seriously going to freeze? Why I tried to, oh my God, look at that. It is the most annoying thing ever. Okay, way to go, Adobe. Anyhow, now we're going to use a box shadow for this I, uh, and also a background. Now, the background, um, I did it with the CSS, CSS background generator. Uh, where is it at? It's like this old one, Colorzilla. Yeah, this thing this thing is so old. But basically what I did is I, uh, this background actually, um, I thought there was a slight gradient from here to here, but I think it's pretty much all the same color, honestly. So we don't even have to do that. Um, so what we'll just use, we'll do is the background um, right here. And that'll get us there quite close. So if I bring this back in and we come here, uh, the background, as you can see, is pretty much the same as the other color. 
All right. Then we're going to do a box shadow. This is where we're going to be able to see the outline of it. So box shadow. And box shadow, of course, can have multiple shadows. All right. So the very first one will do 20 pixels, 20 pixels, and then uh, for the X and Y. Um, and then we'll do a 60 pixel blur RGBA. And we, we're, I'm not going to use black here because that wouldn't, it's, it actually doesn't look consistent with what we're trying to do. So I'll, I'll just do like that. Oh, it's not even working. What is happening here? Div class container. And let me make sure I have everything working correctly. All right. Well, we have to figure this out. Oh, probably we're not seeing it because we need to put in the actual SVG graphic first. So let's do that and then we'll focus back on that part. So the SVG graphic I actually got from Google Images uh, when I typed in, what did I type in? Um, uh, Apple SVG, basically, uh, Apple logo SVG. Um, and here it is. So let's just paste that in. There we go. Now we can see it now because we didn't see it before because there's nothing inside of it. Um, so this is the basic Apple logo that we have here. By the way, I'll add this on um, CodePen so that you can see the reference documentation or the code rather. And um, yeah, all we're having happen here is just uh, we can get rid of all this other stuff here, by the way, version, XML, all that stuff. All right, get rid of that. Then we have a group here with a uh, path, a class one. We'll, we'll get into that later. That'll become useful. And then that's it. All right. So now we look here. So if we look at the color of this as compared to this one right here. Let me get this situated. We'll see that this is more of a colored shadow. It has more of a blue in it. This is just gray, right? So it doesn't look as good. So I'm going to use uh, a specific color code here for this. So when you hover over in Visual Studio Code, like an RGBA or RGB uh, color value um, in other color functions as well, you'll see that uh, this little handy thing comes up here and you can you know, basically move it around to wherever you want it to and adjust the gradient right here and it automatically applies the values for you. That's looking pretty good, but I already uh, kind of worked on this beforehand and the values that I came up with are right here. All right, which is almost exactly the same. So now what we're going to do, when I'm dealing with multiple uh, shadows, I just want to break them up into each own of their own lines. So I, I did that two more times, and you'll see the values that are different. So if I just put a comma here, there we go. Uh, this, we're basically, we have the biggest spread or the largest uh, shadow first. Now I save that. And then I make the smaller shadow and then an even smaller shadow right here. And you can see the color values for each of these to see what I'm doing basically. Um, they're all basically the same. They're exactly the same, but I'm just changing the opacity of them to make them more intense the closer they get in or the smaller they are, if that makes sense. So it kind of just gives us a nice outline like that. Um, so now at this point, what we want to do is we want to uh, yeah, at this point, we actually want to give this a gradient right here. Um, if you notice inside of here, it does have an actual gradient. It's a very light right here. And then it's a little bit darker and blue, uh, bluish purplish down there. So, uh, the background for that is, let's see here. I'm going to copy all this stuff. I'll tell you how I did this, by the way. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to paste in a bunch of stuff right here. A lot of stuff. So if I save that, now we can see we have the light to the dark down here. Now I didn't hand type all this crap out. I went to this uh, gradient generator. I chose this one. I uh, got rid of this color stopper here. Hey, what the heck? There it goes. And all I did is I went to Adobe XD and I chose this right here to get the color picker value of what this is. And I copied that. And then I double clicked on this color picker and then pasted it right there and hit OK. And then I chose this one, double clicked, backed up here, and then we'll do the same thing at the very bottom. And then click this, copy the color code, paste, and there we go. So now we can see also we want a diagonal starting from here to there. And then we just copy this. That's how I got that all. All right. That's just for those of you who are unfamiliar, you know, with you know using a, a gradient generator. So now we're looking, you know, pretty decent. Um, 
at this point, now that we're, we're going to start to actually work on the interesting stuff, which is the SVG um, itself, because we have quite a bit of work to try to get this black looking thing looking more like this over here. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to add a gradient. Now you'd think, you know, maybe we could just use uh, CSS uh, to target this path class right or this right here, this class of one and just give it a gradient uh, with CSS. It won't work with SVG. We have to do it the SVG way of adding a gradient. So to do that, uh, what we will do is we're going to work right here outside of this group within the SVG element and we're going to create uh, an element called radial gradient. All right, so radial gradient. And we're going to give it an ID because we'll need to reference that in the CSS in order to apply it to this path class right here. So ID, we're just going to call it my gradient, which is a really bad name, honestly. I was looking at tutorials and I pasted this in. <laughs> so don't worry, we'll, we'll adjust values. Um, CX is 40%. CY is 40% as well. Um, radius is going to be 90%. And then we have positioning of F or for X, 10%. Gary, come on, type. What are you doing? All right. And then FY equals 20% as well. Now, the best way I could say to learn and to understand what these things are doing is to experiment with them. All right. I uh, just try to change them up. That's what I did to get it into the right position and the right spread as well and the size. Um, and we'll, we'll play with that in a second. So then inside of here, you add a number of color stops. All right. Much in the same way of, the, of that uh, CSS gradient generator, those little color stop things. It's the same thing except you're doing it through code. So we put a stop here. We say offset is we're going to do 20%. And then stop color equals, we just put a hex value color code here. So like FFEFCB. Now let's just do one more and we'll do this one at 50%. So basically we're going from zero all the way to 100%. You can add as many stops as you want. And the more stops you add, the more colors that you're going to have. You can have as you know, little as two, obviously. Um, so at 50%, we'll just say, uh, this color is F0846A. All right. So we save it. We don't see it yet because we haven't actually done anything and attached this. So we need to communicate. We'll use CSS to communicate the fact that this ID of my gradient is going to get placed on this path of class one. So we could do that in CSS, in our CSS file, or you could do it here in inline CSS. Doesn't really matter. Um, we'll go in uh, our actual CSS file and we'll say path.1 fill. URL and we just put in my uh, gradient just like that. Now look at that. Now isn't that cool? So now we know how to actually apply a gradient and this is a radial gradient. There's also a linear gra gradient. I chose to do a radial gradient because the linear gradient wasn't quite matching up uh, as being consistent. Now of course this looks nothing like our goal over here. Now it does start light just like this. And it kind of comes into this color, but we have more colors to add. So I'm just simply just going to paste. Uh, there's two more color stops that I added. This one right here. And there we go. So now I kind of tried to match up. Um, this isn't exactly perfect, but it, it, was, it was good enough for me. Um, probably should have reversed these two, but that, that's okay. Uh, we're getting kind of close now. Next up, what we want to do is you notice how there's like this, this border right here or a stroke. We want to create that stroke as well. So in order to do that, we're going to create another path right here. And we're just going to, going to uh, duplicate it. So we'll paste that in. We'll call this one two. All right. And if we do that, of course, we see two sitting on top of it. Um, we want to create another radial gradient though. So we just put another one right here. These are two new values. Notice this says my gradient two. And I've changed these up just a bit. You can see the radius is smaller on this one, larger on this one. Everything else is the same though. And then we have different co color stops here, which is based on these two color values. It's really light edge right here. And then also this red right here. And so this second one is gonna be placed behind the other one and we're going to transform 
the scale of the one in order to make you be able to see the one behind it, if that makes sense. So we still can't see anything, but we want to go into uh, our CSS path.2. We'll say fill, and this is going to be URL my gradient right here. This one's going to be my gradient two actually for path one. Real quickly, this isn't related. I want to take our SVG and just scale. Notice there's no white space; it's too large. Let's fix that real quick. 200 pixels. You could use um, obviously non-absolute um, values if you want, but this this works right here. All right. So path two. Um, what we want to do here is we want to change the size of that other one um, of path two. So we're going to do inline CSS just to show you, show you there's different ways of doing things. So class two, we can add style. Oops, let's not do that. Edit redo. There we go. We're going to add style. Style equals uh, transform scale 0.97. We want it to be really small scale. Um, and if we do that, notice it's kind of like situated up here. We can change transform origin to center. So now it's kind of centering it right there as such. All right, so now we're getting you know, a fair amount closer looking at this. I, it's not perfect, of course. I would really like the ability to do like an inset shadow, which I know you, I believe you can do that, that can kind of just emulate this color going from here in the edges. Maybe somebody else can come up with that solution. But now let's work on the actual drop shadow. So the drop shadow as well is something that you can't do with just CSS. You have to do it the SVG way by adding this shadow. So we're actually going to add two shadows uh, on this. But first, let's just focus on adding one here. So uh, what we'll do is we're going to focus on adding um, a defs tag here which unfortunately is not recognized by Emmett. So I just have to type it in manually. Um, and then we have to add filters, all right? So we're gonna do a filter ID and we're gonna call it drop shadow and Fittler. Very good, Gary, Fittler, ha <laughs> ha. All right, so we have a filter and what we do, the, the way we, we're going to add a, an actual um, drop shadow is we first use a filter. And so it's going it, to, it looks silly. I hate the way these are, um, I hate how they're named. F-E Gaussian blur, like F-E, and it's all camel case. So Gaussian blur. And then what we say is in equals source alpha, and then STD deviation i hate the naming conventions of these we're going to say is nine all right at this point we're uh, not going to see anything and also we do want to close that we're going to be a self-closing tag here now you'll see this sd deviation that controls how large the sh uh, the drop shadow is and like the spread of it sort of um and then we're going to do fc fe offset we're going to do x dx 20 so this is positioning it dy equals 20 and then result is offset blur all right so now at this point we can go ahead and we can do an fe merge which is going to merge those two values or those two elements that we just defined up there so fe merge node gary stop doing that Stop, stoppy, stoppy. I'm tired. It's late. All right. FE merge node in equals, uh, let's see here. This is going to be our offset blur right here, designated by the result. And then also, let's close that out. Let's replicate that. Shift Alt and the down arrow key will replicate that line. And then we do source graphic. All right. And so it's basically it's going to merge these two here. In um, in order to see this, we have to apply the ID of drop shadow. So the way that works is we do filter equals URL and then drop shadow, similar to CSS. So we save it, and now we actually have our ugly <laughs> sort of a very yeah very ugly drop shadow there. Um, 
So now, if you want to play around with these values, which I think you should, you can see what they do. So the three, five, I'll give you a better idea kind of what's happening there. I, by the way, I notice this is kind of clipping off here. I think if you increase this value right here, these two values, X and Y, you'll get um, more of a larger area for that. But I'm not going to worry about that now. Um, and so now at this point, this looks nothing like that, that, that shadow right here. So what we want to do is if we want to make it and, or turn it into a colored shadow, we're going to use um, this Fe flood and composite values. So let me just show you here. Fe flood, flood color. And this is like just, I color, I color picked, use the color picker for um, getting, or the eyedrop, whatever you call it, uh, from the actual shadow color. And so this is the value for that is 6F327F. Flood opacity. Again, you can play with these values to see what they do. And then result offset color. And then Fe composite. So we're going to take the result of offset color. So in equals offset color. Yeah, color. And then also in two is offset blur, which is defined above it. And so basically, this takes those and just merges those to give that black, that black eye, uh, this here, to give it color essentially. So now we just change this to offset blur like that. And now we actually have a drop shadow that is colored as such. All right, so that is basically the best I was able to come up with. I'm not an expert at SVG, clearly. Um, so I know there's gonna be somebody else out there who can do a better job of trying to get closer to this. I'd really love to see the result. So definitely let me know, come into my Discord server even, uh, and, 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 and let me know, cause I'm always there. Um, if you're able to come up with a better result uh, or mention it in YouTube comments, all right. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new. And like I said, if you think you could do better and improve upon it, I'd like to see it. Let me know. Subscribe as always, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.